Do you know anything about RA nodules? Do you need to know about them? Well, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, you probably should know about nodules. You'll want to be able to identify if you're at risk, what they look like, and understand what they mean about your RA. This is exactly what I wish Laura, a patient I saw a few years ago, knew before I saw her. We're going to go through Laura's story, and as we do, we'll discuss what RA nodules are, who's at risk, and what to do about them. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. Laura was a woman in her 60s who was referred to me for rheumatoid arthritis, but more specifically for help managing her RA in the setting of a new cancer diagnosis. She had had RA since her early 40s, and from the information I had been given in the referral, she had recently been found to have a lung lesion on a chest x-ray. When I saw her, she had what I would call moderate rheumatoid arthritis, meaning she had some hand changes that I could see on my exam, which likely meant she had joint erosions on x-ray. She told me she had been on a few different biologic medications. Each one would eventually stop working, requiring her to make a switch. Throughout all this time, switching biologics, however, she had continued her methotrexate and felt like, aside from this new scary finding in her lungs, she was doing reasonably well. So aside from the changes in her fingers, when I did the physical exam, I also saw that Laura had multiple nodules. She had them on her elbows, her wrists, as these representative pictures show, by the way, these are not pics of her, and her name was not Laura, but this is very representative of what I saw when I examined her. These nodules felt soft, squishy, almost rubbery, and kind of wiggled when I tried to move them, but they didn't move all that much. She didn't really complain about them, didn't note they were painful at all, and when I asked what she knew about them, all she could tell me was that they had been there for years and she never got any answers from her doctors as to what they were. Okay, so this is when my mind starts reeling. Remember, Laura had been urgently referred to me to help manage her medications in the face of a possible new diagnosis of lung cancer. She had had a chest x-ray done with her new primary care doctor and lesions were seen in her lungs. She was referred to me and a pulmonologist in order to get a biopsy. But now that I know she has erosive nodular rheumatoid arthritis, the possibilities for what's in her lungs just got a lot wider and I wasn't sure we were dealing with cancer at all. So let's take a moment and talk about why rheumatoid arthritis nodules happen. Well, the short answer is we don't know, but we do know who is most at risk for getting them. Those with a more severe form of rheumatoid arthritis and those with high levels of rheumatoid factor are more likely to develop nodules. In fact, 40% of seropositive rheumatoid arthritis, seropositive meaning they have a positive rheumatoid factor in their blood test, 40% of them will develop nodules, whereas only 6% of those who are seronegative will. And this is where the level of the rheumatoid factor also comes in. Rheumatoid factor isn't measured as simply positive or negative, but is given a value. And a high value has been associated with more severe disease. And what do I mean when I say severe disease? I mean someone who is more likely to need a combination of treatments to control their rheumatoid arthritis and is more likely to have manifestations of RA outside of their joints. Remember, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune condition that impacts the entire body. And although many will only ever have joint symptoms, some may develop symptoms in other areas of the body. Nodules are an example of this kind of non-joint manifestation of rheumatoid arthritis, as is vasculitis and lung disease. Although we can never predict the future, and our treatment and treatment strategy these days have done wonders at decreasing someone's risk of developing these types of problems, understanding what your rheumatoid factor level is, is a good first step in understanding your flavor of rheumatoid arthritis. In Laura's case, her rheumatoid factor was quite high. 
persistently in the 500s. So she was definitely at a higher risk of having a more severe flavor of RA. Along the same lines, persistent disease activity or inflammation is also a risk factor for developing nodules. The development of nodules or really any other non-joint manifestation of rheumatoid arthritis is often considered a sign of out of control inflammation. Or another way to think about it is her treatments weren't working. This isn't always the case, as we'll talk about a little later, but it often rings true. Okay, so what are these things? Well, RA nodules are usually skin colored, they can be solitary or in groups, and are usually painless, as was the case with Laura. They are a collection of scar tissue and granulomas, and granulomas are really just a collection of immune cells. They can be in your deep subcutaneous tissues or more superficial, and they can even be found in your internal organs like your liver, your heart, your eyes, and your lungs. When they are more superficial, they tend to occur at sites where we put a lot of pressure or are exposed to repeated trauma, which is why we often see them on the outside of our elbows, our forearms, or our heels. Like I said, we don't really know why nodules appear, just that they do, especially when someone has a high rheumatoid factor and persistent inflammation. There is a theory that the high rheumatoid factor activates certain cells and factors within our tissues that then leads to granuloma formation. Again, remember that granulomas are simply a collection of immune cells, but this is yet to be proven out. So now that I had a clearer picture of Laura's flavor of erosive and nodular rheumatoid arthritis, it was time to decide what to do, not only about her rheumatoid arthritis, but these lung lesions. When we have nodules, we tend not to just have one, and we had to consider the possibility that these lung lesions weren't cancer at all, but were RA nodules. But how do we prove that? We can't simply just assume it was from rheumatoid arthritis, although my suspicion was very high, because the risk of being wrong, well, the risk is obviously really high. No one wants to miss a lung cancer diagnosis. So we stuck with our plan and she had a CT of her lungs and ultimately a biopsy of one of the lesions. A biopsy is necessary because although the x-ray and CT scans offer important information, the pictures alone aren't enough to distinguish between lung cancer and rheumatoid arthritis nodules. Thankfully, she underwent the biopsy without any problems and sure enough, the result came back consistent with rheumatoid arthritis nodule. This was obviously great news, but we're now left with the question, okay, so what do we do about her RA? Well, right away I could see there was a bit of a disconnect. Laura had expressed that she was doing well, but not only did she have nodules, which are a sign of persistent inflammation, but I also saw that she had many swollen joints and was needing ibuprofen around the clock to be able to live her life. I see this a lot. We can become accustomed to the pain and stiffness of our autoimmune disease thinking it's just the way it is. And this can prevent us from pushing to find better treatments or answers for our pain. And I get it, it can be exhausting to keep pushing. And sometimes feeling good enough is well enough. There is a balance we must strike between doing what we can to feel our best and accepting that rheumatoid arthritis and similar conditions are chronic without cures. So Laura and I had a frank conversation about the state of her RA and we agreed to look at making treatment changes that would hopefully get us better control of her inflammation. But getting better control wasn't the only reason we needed to make a change. We also needed to look at stopping the methotrexate as this can often be the cause for rheumatoid arthritis nodules. What? Yes, yes, the medication almost every person with rheumatoid arthritis has or is taking can also cause nodules. I know it's like super confusing and super frustrating. But in someone like Laura, who had multiple nodules and had been on methotrexate for years, we had to consider it as a culprit. I'm happy to report that we found a treatment regimen for Laura without methotrexate that better controlled her rheumatoid arthritis and allowed her to back off the ibuprofen. I hope Laura's story has been helpful and you have learned not only about rheumatoid arthritis nodules, but how we approach them and how they are related to active RA. I also hope you've seen how strong communication between you and your doctor is key when developing the right treatment strategy for you and your condition. 
If you want to learn more about rheumatoid factor or rheumatoid arthritis, I have many videos you can check out in the description box below, but would recommend starting with the rheumatoid factor as this test result can give you insight into the flavor of RA that you have. If you have RA, are concerned about nodules, or just generally concerned or have questions about your treatment strategy and are interested in a second opinion with me, I am now open for out-of-network second opinions in California, Texas, Florida, and Tennessee, and you can learn more about that in the description box. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.